Well, hello, everybody. How we doing? December 19th. Coming at you with a flax bag tutorial. So, this is how I buy my flax seed. Five pound bag. Um on Amazon but you don't need, <laughs> you probably don't need five pounds of it right I just have been making for friends and um, family and stuff and I like these giant ones you guys especially in the winter they're so good the flax smells so good I mean it's just so good um, and you put them around your neck these giant ones you heat for about two minutes in the microwave our little baby ones that we use on our nails only need to get heated for about one minute if you go beyond that you'll burn it like I did mine so um alright let's talk about it now you can buy flax I get it on Amazon but you can buy it at your grocery stores uh, and like a one pound bag is going to be plenty for you unless you want to make a bunch of stuff for friends right or if you're a stylist and you want to make um, flax bags for giveaways super easy cheap etc so there's the flax let's get that out of the way now I just want to be able to show you guys okay so originally um, I bought this cute dotty material at uh, Joanne Crafts and I just got it in um, like the remnant bin so it was cheap it's just a nice cotton now you can't wash these you guys obviously because they're full of flax seeds so don't try to wash them but um, I fill these about halfway full and the reason I do that is because then if you're using them to set your nails you can fold it in half and let everything get heated okay so a few things to know if you feel fill it fuller it's not gonna bend anymore but that's up to you if you're just laying it across your strips to warm your strips then that's fine another thing to keep in mind if you're only laying it across your strips maybe 30 to 45 seconds will be plenty because you don't want to make them super super gooey right also you guys are seeing day 23's nails on me so just pretend you didn't see them but I just finished that video and have it uploading um if it burns it's garbage as far as I'm concerned it stinks so bad like worse than burnt popcorn okay so just be done with it so originally when I made these I had this big remnant of like a yard of material okay so I made this I cut it out it's just a piece of cardboard it is about 17 to 18 inches long and about six to seven inches wide now there's no hard there's nothing hard and fast to this you guys nothing at all but I knew that when I folded it which I'm not gonna fold it because I like that this is nice and stiff and if I have big material I just hold it down I use my little roller cutter which I'll show you and I only use the roller cutter um, if I have like a big yard of material so this is the roller color Fiskars you guys I'm not sponsored by Fiskars but they better get on it because I'm constantly showing their stuff so you hit this your little super sharp tiny pizza cutter comes out and you just zoop 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 you know easy peasy incredibly sharp goodbye fingers all right so there's that but my thought is for people wanting to make them at home and you're saying Stacy I don't sew and I don't have a sewing machine and that's okay my sewing machine is about 18 years old I bought it at Walmart um, for like 90 to 100 dollars it's a super super basic singer sewing machine it does you know six stitches nothing fancy nothing crazy but it's 
exactly what I need because I'm not making anything beyond this stuff. You know, a pillow, a curtain, like I don't, I don't have any fantastic sewing skills. So let's do this. So another favorite, if you're just making, if you're just making like one or two of these, you guys, at Walmart in their fabric section, they have all these cute little Waverly fat quarters and they're under a dollar and super cute patterns on them. Look at this seahorse. Just tons and tons of them, right? Okay, so when you get this, again, really, the guy that decided we should put extra sticky, sticky stuff on material. I don't even like him. I don't like that guy. I'll deal with that later. And then, What's the future of cooking? hang on, my music reset itself. There we go. I hate this. I just hate this kind of stuff, you guys. But I do consider these a little bit disposable just because probably eventually you'll burn it. <laughs> you'll get too carried away. <laughs> Hopefully you don't. <laughs> I always do. I've gone through so many of these in my history. And then when you open it up, there is a little cardboard in here. So for these ones, I just consider them already the perfect size. So in my head, this is going to make three. So I'm going to fold it like this into thirds. Now, when we lay this on here, you'll notice the width is almost perfect. The length is just a hair long, but I don't care. It, do, it doesn't matter to me because not only are these fantastic for your nails, they're amazing if you heat them and put them on your eyes when you have a headache. So now that I have this like this, all I would do is take legitimate scissors and cut right along here, you know, right down that little seam that I've made because I have this folded into thirds, okay? And I was going to get my sewing machine down here, you guys, and show you, but I just couldn't think of a very good way to then film that. So here we are. We are not a sewing channel, but we're going to, we're going to roughly pretend we are today. Okay. So here's another material I got from the fat quarters and I've already cut a piece. So I'm going to lay the spare over here and Either way, whether you have a sewing machine or not, um, you can iron this if you want to get all, all the little um, seams from being folded out. And I don't iron it because literally the first thing you're going to do once you've made it is heat it in the microwave and it pretty much takes care of all the little seams. So we're folding it inside out, you guys. That's all. Folded it in half inside out. I'm not going to stitch this side because I don't, I don't care that it's just my folded seam. It doesn't have to look, um, perfectly, uh, spot on for me. So if you don't have a sewing machine, hand stitch it. It's not that big of a deal. You guys, this is one thing you might spend an hour on it, but you're going to have your own little flex bag and it's just going to be done deal, right? So you're going to run your seam from here to here, down here, and then down to about here. I like to leave, how much is that? A couple inches? Yep, about two inches. So we're going to leave about two inches, and then basically, I stick my fingers in the hole. Hang on one sec. Willow, 
Do you have your um, safety pins over there? Yeah. Can I use them for a sec? Mm -hmm. Thanks, honey. I'm not going to sew, but I'm going to pretend sew this, you guys, with safety pins. Now, I use the closest, smallest stitch on my sewing machine because I don't want any flax coming out. And sometimes I even go the extra one foot and um, do it double. Now, anytime I'm near a corner where I'm turning a corner, then I will reverse it forward, reverse it forward, you know, to do a few stitches because I don't, it's the last thing you want for real to have your uh, flax falling out all over heck and back. It might even be worse than having it get burnt in the microwave because you clicked it on for too long. Um, another thing to know while I'm safety pinning these sides as my pretend stitches, um, is that depending on what your surface is, so let's say you sit at your countertop kitchen and do your nails and your countertop kitchen is, your kitchen countertop is marble, whatever side of this is setting on that marble It'll be cold in literally a half a second. And if that is what you're doing when you're doing your nails, I would say reevaluate. At least put something down because that surface is way too cold to have your nails sitting on. Now, while I was thinking about doing this tutorial and how I was going to do it, I was thinking that I wonder on Amazon, I feel like there has to be some kind of little like heating pad you know I have a heating pad on the back of my chair but it's like 30 inches long but there's got to be some kind of little like tabletop warming surface type thing that would probably work really perfect for doing your nails I mean anytime except probably in the summer because in the summer they do get a little a little gooey right but I was just thinking there's got to be something so I'm gonna look into that also because I just feel like man I am needing it this winter I am and it's not even winter really I mean it's not even Christmas yet January and February are when life really gets to suck in so I just feel like I really need something lately and I don't want to put my whole heating pad down I don't feel like that's very convenient I would love something that's more like a solid surface rather than cloth um, if I'm gonna do like a whole little heating surface so I don't know I gotta look into that I'm gonna look into that okay so there we are pretending these are our these are our um, se seams we have stitched okay so then and I wouldn't leave that big of a hole but for safety pin sakes we're going to then you're gonna reach in to your far opposite corner hopefully I can do this with my safety pins and you're gonna flip it right side out and just go in there and kind of work your corners around now I will show you here in a sec and we know this is pretty half butted looking but it'll work this is a little um, wooden skewer thing that seem better days but it works perfect for sticking in the holes and then really getting your corners nice and pointy which it would not work perfect for this because this is sewn with safety pins not really sewn but you can see in here it'll get your corners you know nice and pointy it'll really push them out for you okay so now hey that safety pins that worked you guys okay so now you've flipped it out and you're gonna have this little bit that you're gonna fold in okay 
like this. But before we do that, we have to fill with flaxseed. So this extra fancy product that I've copyrighted and made. <laughs> so piece of kind of nice white cardstock. Doesn't matter what color or anything. Folding it into a little funnel. And I mean, if you have a regular funnel, use it. The reason I made this is because I was making a bunch. I think this year I've made like 25 flex bags already. And then I used packing tape to tape it. I didn't want my little seeds falling into stuff, you know, and getting stuck in there. So I taped it good and I put tape on the inside to cover the seams. And then we're just taking this and sticking it into our bag and then pouring our flax down the, down the little funnel. So when it gets about half full, which for this one would be up to here, then I shake my flax, you know, more to the side because I'm going to be sewing here. I have folded that in half, or tucked that in, which you'll see. This was the tuck in part. And now this is the only part where you're sewing um, an outside seam. Now I could have used black thread here and had it match much better, but I didn't care. These flax bags were just made with the love of Stacy, with the thoughts of nail friends in mind. I wasn't making them to try to sell to anybody. I wasn't making them to be glorious and lovely. And hopefully when they take out their flex bag and warm it up, they're like, "Ah, Stacy took, you know, an hour out of her life and made that for me. And that's nice, right? N not like, oh, Stacy makes a shitty seam. Hopefully they never thought that. So there it is. Here it is here folded in and you're either going to hand stitch or sewing machine. And if your sewing machine, like me, you're going back and forth a few times on it, right? So like up here, I do reverse and forward, reverse and forward, because I don't want anything to leak out. And then just straight along there, and then a bunch more reverse and forward there. And I go a little extra, even though I know that I had already sewn that further, I go a little extra because I really want to make sure we're not losing any seeds out of it. So there it is, you guys. Easy peasy. This is a great length right here. And that would cover your nails. Um, remember, only do it about half full so that you can, you know, heat it and fold it. And then it'll set your nails up nice and solid for you. Um, really, you have to play with it a little bit for how much you want to heat it. This big one here if you're if you and if you buy like a couple pounds of flax make yourself one of these nice big ones for your neck too right so this one I bought on eBay quite ages ago and it was like $30 these little ones you guys I make for just a couple bucks each is what they're costing me and like this size so it was 97 cents say a dollar for the material so about 40 cents for each one for material and then you know it doesn't take much to stitch it shut and then maybe a couple bucks worth of flax in them so they're just you know they're all costing you right around three dollars it's it's not a big deal at all to make these it's not costly but if you're going on Etsy to buy them and somebody else you know has done all the work and such then they're gonna cost you more and of course this one's bigger um, and she even had little tags on them and such which is long wore off uh, on this one I think she used more like a furniture like an upholstery material it's a lot thicker but there's a lot of flax in here you guys a good couple pounds of it and when I heat this I have to kind of coil it like this I usually fold it like that and that's how I set it in the microwave and let it go for about two minutes if I'm reheating it, like if it's still got a teeny bit of warmth, but not a ton, then another two minutes is good. Um, if I'm heating it from cold, I can go up to maybe two and a half minutes, but I don't want to go beyond that. I don't want to burn it. Another thing or another couple things that I do with mine, you know, that I've made 
like big like this to use on for migraines and stuff is when you heat it you can take just get your hand wa damp under running water and run it on this or you could use a spritzer bottle and just give it a little dampness before you heat it because the moist heat is lovely. Another thing I do, and I have tons of these oils, this one is a migraine one, and I have just plain peppermint oil in roller, roller balls that I use, and I'll just go like this, and it's just going to get enough of that on there that with the heat, and especially the moist heat, it's amazing for migraines like as a migraine person, if you decide to venture into making some flax bags, if you make a nice big one like this, which is, let's see how long this is, because I don't even know. Oh, I would say at least. Yeah, you guys, it's 32 inches long. And then about three inches wide. And it has, I would say, at least two pounds, at least two pounds of flax in there, maybe even more. So if you are doing that for a migraine person and then make them one like this for their eyes, they're going to be so happy. It's a perfect, perfect gift. And then if you included a little peppermint oil in there that they could rub on here um, and that they can, you know, I put my peppermint in the same rollerball situation as I do my flat or I do my jojoba oil and then use it on your temples use it on your wrists use it on your neck and it does amazing things for migraines uh, my friend Amanda M can vouch for that because I sent her a rollerball of peppermint and she and her husband are now addicted to it because it is fantastic for your nerves and such so there, this got longer than I <laughs> meant to, which is the story of my life. But, you know, you need to, um, you need to not overfill unless you don't want to fold it. You need to make sure, like, even this draws the heat out of my stuff, you guys. A lot of times when I'm getting ready, I will heat this and set it down and let it heat my desk area, then set my nails down and then flip this over because this side already got its heat sucked out and put it here. And you've heard me how many times when I've asked Willow to throw them in the microwave. Like one day I'll have a little mini microwave that stays by me just for reheating, as I call them, my neckies because I love them. I'm totes addicted to them. They're wonderful over your eyes, around your neck, wherever. I had a sore knee for a couple weeks, and Willow would heat this good and hot for me and wrap my knee in it, and it was amazing, you guys. It's so much better than anything you can plug in, as far as I'm concerned. And they smell lovely. So there you go, you guys. I hope I helped you. Please let me know if you have questions. Make some flax bags. Make them for Christmas for people. Make them for yourself if you're a stylist. You know, make them for the people in your group. I mean, they're awesome. They're awesome to get your nails sealed up nice and tight. They're just good. They're good. Have a good day, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.